Hello and welcome to another video. This is a stock image and I will put full details together with the link below this video. Now I was searching for textures and I came across watercolour textures and I thought that sounds good. Took a look and I came up with this one and that gave me the idea. How about creating a watercolour using this image? Right, the first thing we're going to do is use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer. We're now going to head up to Filter. I'm going to come down to Artistic and we're going to go across to Cutout. Now when the Filter Gallery opens, it's on Artistic, Cutout. The number of levels I'm using is 8. Edge Simplicity is set on 4. Edge Fidelity is set on 1. This is the sort of look that I'm going for. We're now going to click on OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to our Watercolor Texture. Picking up the Move tool. We're going to click down. As I click down, I'm going to lift it up. Notice the way that the cursor has now changed. It's a black arrowhead. Press and hold down shift on the keyboard. So hold down that shift key. Coming up to the tab for our fishing boats, release your pen or mouse and in it goes. And because you held down shift, it's placed it directly over the center. Now this is a little bit bigger than the image underneath. So I'm going to use command T or Control T, that's Command T or Control T for the Transform tool, but you can't see the framework or any of the grab handles. Simply use Command or Control, now press 0, and out it zooms. You can now see the full frame with all of the grab handles. Come into the top center, hold Alt or Option, so hold down Alt or Option because you're holding down Alt or Option. The top and the bottom have come in equally. Keep that Alt or Option pressed, come to the side. The two sides are now coming equally. Come into there and just double click it inside the framework. Job done. Command 0, Control 0 will go back to fit on screen. Now so we can see the image underneath, I'm going to change the blend mode from normal. We're going to come down to overlay. Like the way those colors work with the image underneath. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to group these two layers together. Top layer is highlighted. Press and hold down Command or Control. Now click on layer one, both are highlighted. Coming up to this little icon here, to create a new group, clicking on it. There it is, group one. Let's double click, that's highlighted it. We're gonna call this what it's going to be, which is our water color. Right, next, we need to put a new layer above our background layer. So clicking on the background layer, clicking on this little icon, in goes the new empty layer. Now make sure you've got the default colors, any other colors, press D on the keyboard to restore those default colors. We're now going to fill this empty layer with white. There's a very simple shortcut. Press and hold down Command or Control, so press, hold down Command or Control. Now press Delete or Backspace, so that's Delete on a Mac, it is Backspace on a PC. You have now filled layer 3 with white, as we can see. Right, we're now going to fill this layer with texture. In fact, let's switch it off. Filter, texture, coming down to texturizer. Now with the filter gallery opens, right click. I'm going to go to 100% so you can see exactly how it's going to look. I've selected canvas, scaling. I always take uh, up, I can't remember where the default is now, but I always take it right up to the maximum. That removes any repeat pattern that you can have with the canvas in particular. Relief, I've taken down to two. I just want it to be in the background. I don't want it to overwhelm the image. And we're going to click on OK. So there it is. There's our texture on our white background. Clicking back on our watercolor group. Clicking on it to make sure it's live. We're now going to add a layer mask. But before you click on that layer mask icon, press and hold down Alt or Option. Now click on the layer mask icon. And because you held down Alt or Option, you've put in the hide all mask, in other words, the black mask. We're now going to create a paintbrush to bring back our painterly effect. So clicking on this icon here, which is going to put in a new empty layer, we're going to fill this empty layer with white. So as we did before, press, hold down, command, control, hold down, command, control, backspace or delete has filled it with white. We've still got our default colors. Let's head up to filter, coming down, to render, coming across to clouds. And clouds is going to be the start for our paintbrush that we're creating. Whites, this is where it's going to remove most of the black mask. Those greys, it's just going to sort of fade out in the greys. The blacks, it's going to leave the mask intact. 
Now you can use Control and F or Command and F to cycle through until you find something with perhaps more whites, perhaps more blacks. There, that will do nicely. That should be pretty good. Let's pick up an elliptical marquee tool. So down to tool options. If you've got the rectangular one, select this one here, the elliptical. I've also got new selection. That's pressed as well. And I've taken the feather to 100 pixels. Let's close this down out of the way. Clicking down, dragging it out. And because we got the new selection, I can bring it inside. I can move it around, perhaps into this region here. Yeah, that will do nicely. Right, for our paintbrush, edit, define brush from selection. We're going to click on this. It's asking us for a name for a brush. Well, I'm going to call this what it is, which is cloud brush. I've got a feeling I've got a few others, so I'm going to put in two. Right, press enter or return to apply it. We now need to remove the selection. So that's control or command, now D. We're now going to remove this layer. So simply press delete on the keyboard. It's asking us, are we sure? Yes, it is now gone. Right, pressing B on the keyboard or selecting your paintbrush tool. And there is the brush we have just created. Right, next, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So just using the left hand square bracket to take it down, heading down to tool options, having a look at it. There it is. There's the size of the brush. The opacity, take this down to 30, let's just add a little bit more. Let's take it to 35% for the opacity. Clicking on the tool options to fold that out of the way. I'm now going to click down a couple of times. And there's, as we can see, we're starting to bring through the image underneath, coming around our sky area like this. And there it is. Dropping the size of the brush down using the left hand square bracket, coming over this area here around the bottom. I'm not going to go too far over to the right hand side there, but I am going to bring it back so we can get those colors in the sky. That's looking pretty good like this. If we just take a look at the mask, I'm going to press Alt or Option. So press, hold down, Alt or Option, click on the mask, and you can see that dappled look. It looks very much like they're clouds, doesn't it? And I'll click on the little eye icon. That'll put it back out of the way. Dropping the size of the brush down, using the left hand square bracket, just coming over the fishing boats here and over this one, just to bring through some more detail with these. And there it is. Let's zoom in. Spacebar, command or control. That's 100%. Let's go in further, 200%. Like the way this is starting to look, that effect is uh, looking pretty good. You may decide you want to leave it like this. I'm going to drop the size of the brush right the way down now and just come over here you can click and drag as well just to bring some more color out of this area here using the space bar to move around and just coming around the fishing boat here onto our first one that will do right command zero control zero and there it is there's the story so far and as i've said you may want to leave it like this but to take it a stage further to a watercolor effect we're now going to unfold, so coming up to our group. So looking for this arrow, which is facing to the right hand side, click on that. There's the two layers. I'm going to go down to the background layer and we're going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J to duplicate this layer. I'm now going to click on it. We're going to lift it up and I'm going to look for a solid black line between layer one and layer two. There it is, releasing it in that goes. Right, with this layer, we're going to add some lines to it. So we're going to head up to Filter, coming down to Filter Gallery. Now this is going to open it on Artistic, on uh, Cutout, which is the last filter we applied. We're going to leave this in place. I'm now going to come down to this icon here, which is the New Effects layer. Clicking on it, we have now got two cutouts. I'm going to come across to Sketch. We're going to go down to Photocopy. Now this is applying the photocopy on top of our cutout. If I just switch it off, that's how it would look without the cutout. With the cutout, we get this type of look, which is exactly what I'm after. We've got the detail set on two. We've got the darkness set on four. I'm gonna take the detail up just a little bit. So I'm gonna click on this. Let's move it across to three. That looks better. We're gonna click okay to that. In it goes, you can see it's like colored lines. I'm gonna press H on the keyboard to give me the 
hand tool, just in case I click down. We're now going to change the blend mode of this layer, our sketch layer. We're going to change it from normal. Let's take a look at multiply, because we're going to darken down. And I'm going to double click where it says background. I'm going to call this what it is, which is sketch, so you know exactly what's on these layers. Right, if I just switch this off and on, you can see the way it works with the image underneath. Right, let's click on layer one. We're going to use Command J or Control J, that's Command J, Control J, to duplicate this layer. Heading up to Filter, we're going to come down to Blur. We're going to come across to Gaussian Blur. And with Gaussian Blur, I'm going to take this up. Let's take it up to, I think 11 is just a bit too strong. 10 looks pretty good. Let's zoom in, that space bar, Command, Control. Zooming into this area here, I think that could look pretty good just coming around here like the way that's working, we're now going to click on OK. Right, next, using Command-0, Control-0 to go back to fit on screen. We're going to drop down the opacity on our blur layer. So I'm going to take it down. Always a good idea as well. Just double click, call it what it is, which is blur. So you know exactly what's on this layer. Just taking down the opacity slightly on it, come down a little bit more into this region here. Clicking back on our mask, pressing B on the keyboard, there's our brush tool back. White is our foreground color. Let's just come over this, add a bit more color up into the sky here, yeah, just a little bit more around this area as well. So just click and drag in over that fishing boat here and here as well. There, starting to look really good. Right, just on this area, clicking and drag in on the sand like that, some lovely colors coming through. If you switch off the color layer, you can see how that's working with the image. Talking of this color layer, let's click on it. I'm gonna zoom in, spacebar, command or control. The only thing I'm not too keen on, we got some speckles down here. So I'm gonna head back up to filter, to blur, to Gaussian blur. No, we're not gonna blur it by that amount. Instead, I'm gonna drop it right the way down, taking it to, you can see, still see a few little speckles there taking it up to three, that's looking better. Just dropping it down very slightly, leaving it on three pixel radius. Let's click on OK, using Command at zero, Control zero to go out to fit on screen. There it is, there is our watercolor effect. I'm gonna fold the group back up. One finishing touch, we're gonna to click on the adjustment layer, use any of these adjustment layers, doesn't matter at all. I'm gonna go for brightness and contrast. Let's close that down by clicking on the cross. I'm gonna click on the blend mode. We're gonna change it to multiply, which really darkens it down. And I'm gonna drop down the opacity, taking it right the way down, just until you get the type of colors that you want with your image. Perhaps something around about the 20%. There, looking pretty good like that. There it is, just zooming in taking a look at 100%. There is our watercolor effect. One final thought, we've got a layer here with our watercolor paper on it. Let's just go back out to fit on screen. If you want the yellows, which we've got here and here over on this side, you simply highlight the layer. So on layer two, come into image, rotate, and you can flip it both horizontal and you can flip it vertically. So it's worth trying these out and make sure you flip layer. You do not want to use this one here. Make sure it says layer horizontally going across. So the yellow is now on this side. I think I prefer it back over. So I'm just going to use Command Z or Control Z to undo that. And there it is. There is our finished image. Let's just fold it up out of the way. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come and click that little bell icon. That way you'll receive notifications every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.